So to recap kind of some of the concepts that we've learned, let's say we have these three groups and I'm just going to copy and paste them so that we can break up the, um, the kind of variability that we will be looking at. And so if I separate them out here, we can see up above in these blue lines, we have the variability that's gonna be between each group. We would say this would be due to the effect. Let's say this is drug. Um, this drug would be um, making the distributions increase. So let's say this is the lower one's placebo. This is 10 milligrams of drug and this is 30 milligrams of drug. The increasing amount of drug pushes the distribution off to the right. Then down here, we have the variability that's just due to random chance. This is just people being different. And that's the variability within. And sometimes we just call it error because you see how it's just random error. It's not due to anything systematic. It's just the random variability between people. So what we'll end up doing is taking that variability between and the variability within and dividing them, dividing the between by the within to come up with, a, sorry, a number that represents the ratio of variance. Let's say we had a study that looked like this, placebo 10 milligrams and 20 milligrams. Do you see how the variability between is quite large, but the variability within is quite small. So the number that we would get for the sums of squares between is gonna be a much larger in the numerator than the sums of squares within in the denominator, and that would give us a very large F value. Sorry, I keep jumping ahead. Now let's say we have something like this, and this is zero milligrams, 10, and 20. Now clearly they're not all in the same distribution, but do you see how the variability between is kind of muddled up with the variability within? So this number may end up being a almost close to one because the variability between isn't that much larger than the variability within. So F values around one tend to not be significant because there isn't a whole lot of effect of our treatment. So there are two sources of variability. In ANOVA, we estimate the variability between groups and compare that with the variability within groups. So the between group variability is the variation between conditions due to treatment. And there's a little bit of random error happening in there, but it's primarily due to treatment. Within group variability, that's just due to chance. That's just random sampling error. How are people different by chance? So we take that total variability and we split it into two groups within groups and between groups. And we calculate the sums of squares between the sums of squares within, and we divide them by their degrees of freedom, and we end up with the mean squared within, the mean squared between, and we, take, we calculate our F value as taking that mean squared between and dividing by the mean squared within. This will give us our observed F value, otherwise known as our calculated F value, and that will tell us, we can look at that and compare it to our rejection region to see if it's um, really large. And this is where I like to, oops, sorry, tell students that this is where we love JASP. I'm gonna show you how to make JASP do this calculation for you. So you don't have to worry about um, figuring out how to do this math, but I'd like you to understand conceptually what the math is doing. It's taking a ratio of variability due to the effect over random error. I just want to look at a couple other pictures so you can really understand what might be happening. See, in this picture here, there's a lot of between group variability that's really large. And then down in the denominator, there's very small within group variability. And because the numerator would be so much larger, we end up with a very large F value. But look at something like this, where there's a lot of random variability. You could see how the routine group variability is quite large. It's the same as the screen before, but because there's so much random within variability in the denominator, oops, sorry, in the denominator, that makes us lose the effect that we see in the between group variability, and the ratio becomes about one and tells us that there isn't really anything that we can say about there being a significant difference.